What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another New World video. Beta was awesome, I had an amazing time, but there are five things that I think that are definitely going to be nerfed, adjusted, or tuned uh, that are going to come during the launch and <laughs> listen, I want to talk about these even if they don't happen just so you can start thinking about what you're going to do if these changes occur. Now, the reason I say that these things are most likely going to happen is because a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today basically make other stuff in the game pale in comparison when looking at them. And in my experience playing the alphas and the previews and pretty much all the test phases um, is that Amazon is not afraid to make sweeping changes, especially when one thing is dominating any area in the game. Uh, case in point, back in the day, uh, we used to do breach portals, uh, basically XP trains. We'd just be like 100 people running from portal to portal to portal to power level. They nerfed that to the ground. <laughs> All right. So that's not saying the breach portals, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are still doing those right now for XP, or we're doing them in the, in the beta for XP. But trust me, the XP on those used to be a lot crazier to the point where you literally had to do nothing in the game but that, and you were fine after you got your Azoth staff but there's some other things in the game we're going to talk about that are definitely going to get changed i'd imagine um so again i just want you guys to be prepared for that as we get into this so first off and foremost guys we're going to talk about the big elephant in the room and that my friends is going to be healing all right healing is definitely going to get adjusted i'd be willing to a bet bet any amount of money on this and the reason i say this is because um, the way that healing is in its current state and i get it this is a result of community feedback i'd imagine it's on us because throughout the testing phases, a lot of the healers were asking for more effective heals, right? And Amazon, they listened. So they adjusted the <laughs> the, the life staff kit and made the heals kind of insane. Gave some new additions, adjusted the, the, the life staff uh, trees, and it's been crazy. Really, really crazy to the point where it almost trivializes all the content. Now, I'm not saying this because, you know, I just don't like healers or whatever, because trust me, I love it. I'm a tank, all right? So when I'm in the front line in Siege and, you know, I'm getting healed and I don't have to do nothing and I'm not even dying as a tank because, you know, my healers just pop a few circles on me and I'm good 100%. Uh, or when we're in the dungeon and I'm, you know, I'm taking a laser from the boss and Lazarus and I don't have to worry about it because my healer is just spamming heals on me and I just can't die. I love of it <laughs> however <laughs> with the state of the healing right now as someone who's done all the dungeons in the game currently who's done a hell of a lot of pvp a lot of siege wars a lot of duels a lot of everything healing kind of trivializes the content right now so i'd imagine they want healing to be strong but i don't think they want it to be strong to the point where it negates everything else for those of you guys who've had who have had the unique opportunity of dueling a healer 1v1 or with any combination of weapon with a life staff you probably found that you couldn't kill them all right uh <laughs> or it was really hard so i think amazon will probably approach this one of two ways or both ways with that i think they will probably either reduce the amount of heals uh that are going out so kind of scale back the production of heals so maybe a 20 percent heal reduction 30 percent heal reduction uh, and with that, I think automatically it'll make a lot of the content a lot more difficult because your healers will have to work harder and it'll separate the people that actually want to heal from the people that are just healing because it's the thing to do. Um, or if they don't scale back the heals, then I'd imagine that they'll start to slowly introduce more mechanics like heal block that are on more weapons. So let's say they introduce the claymore or the void gauntlet or whatever. <laughs> then they'll probably have mechanics on those weapons like heal block or decreased defense or things that will allow you to kill healers or stop healing or prevent healing or mitigate healing a lot more effectively because the way that it stands right now healings is just way too strong it's it's just it's a lot right now however they could do both you we could see introduction of heal block abilities and a reduction in healing but overall we'll just have to wait and see uh what they have planned because i'm sure they got a lot of stuff planned in the pipeline and there's rumors going around that we still have like five or six more weapons still coming so meta shift could be inbound so we'll have to wait to see what amazon has to say but i definitely think that healing is definitely 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 going to get touched now the next thing i want to talk about in terms of nerfs are falling into the weapon category 
or weapons category. There are two weapons in particular, and I don't think that they're going to get touched in a way that's just going to nerf them to oblivion. But there are two weapons that I think are slightly overtuned outside of the life staff, and I think that is the two hand axe. Currently, uh, I know a lot of two hand axe users have been waiting for a long time to have their moment to shine, and it's been it in this beta test. Uh, but there's a couple of things that you can manipulate with the two hand axe. There's this thing one of the officers in the guild were telling me about. Shouts out to Asuna. He was telling me there's a way that you can use the two hand axe to make it attack twice, um, not the one in the skill tree essentially but there's a way that you proc a second hit so it's instant and it deals a lot of damage and you can kind of like cheese it right uh so i definitely think that'll get adjusted and of course the hatchet that has been ridiculous since i don't even know when um i think it's a 50 50 split on whether or not this weapon will get touched just because like the hatchet is strong in certain situations but it's not one of those things that it's ridiculously op and you just can't kill it in all situations so uh, on the two-hand axe, I definitely think it'll get adjusted just because there's some broken mechanics in there that you can kind of play with. But on the hatchet, um, I think that it's it's a coin toss whether it'll get touched or not because it's strong in certain situations, weak in others. All right, so there's that. Now, the next thing I definitely think is also going to get adjusted is going to be the quest board. Now, I hear you guys, you guys are like, but D, the quest board already got nerfed. They nerfed the XP, they nerfed the spawn time of the quests, and I get that. But the challenge is, is if you position yourself efficiently enough, let's say you own three houses or four houses or ten houses or however many houses you bought, or if you set up yourself in a way that you can visit multiple towns, quest board hands down is still like the best way to level. So it's still kind of overpowering pretty much all the other methods in the game, especially when we talk about another nerf that I think is going to happen as well. But when you look at the quest board, <clears throat> I think that they've designed the game in a way that they wanted to create options for players, right? So if you're a solo player, you have a way to level. If you're a crafter, you have the way to level. If you're a PvP, you have a way to level, right? Or you can combine all of these avenues and kind of create your own efficient way to level. However, what the quest board would have created in the beta, uh, and, and I don't know if this is a mechanic that they introduced because they wanted us to just, you know, have a way to power level in the beta so we can get to 60, um, or this was just a slight overtune, but either way, um, it created a circumstance where you didn't have to do anything in the game. Like, I still don't have my Azoth staff, like, because I didn't need it. There was no need for me to do story quests at all uh, because the quest board was just so insane little just ridiculously insane so even after the nerfs like it's still pretty good right so i'd imagine like we might see some future scaling on that uh, because they probably want players to get out into the world and explore so if i was going to change some things uh, things i might be looking at is probably increasing the amount of xp you're getting from crafting and gathering other than professions like skinning because skinning xp is redonkulous all right even though you don't even get xp anymore after you hit 200 but the way that skinning is especially after you get to morningdale is it's just nutty all right <laughs> <laughs> it's just nutty. So a major, major balance like XP change uh, throughout pretty much the whole system, I think, is definitely inbound. Uh, or maybe they've already had it planned and these were specifically for the beta. Now, with that brings me to my next nerf, which is one that I I'm, I don't want to happen, but I think it will happen. Uh, and that's going to be talking about the open world elite zones. Now, with the open world elite zones, these are pro this has probably been my favorite way to level in the beta. Well, most fun for me because... I like killing stuff, even though quest boards were still the most effective. The elite zones, what made them so good is basically unlimited potion farm. Uh, you can get weapon XP up the wazoo. Like, you're leveling like a sword to 20 in like a couple hours or whatever. Like, super easy, right? Crazy XP. At one point, we were getting 1,000 XP a minute when we were at Scorpius, the level 50 zone. But, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, like, it, it, it's got to get nerfed because the mob respawn there is just entirely too fast. It's just like, you push up, you kill mobs, you know, 30 seconds later, mobs respawn. We have unlimited boss farm, unlimited mob spawn, unlimited gold farm, unlimited repair parts farm. Like, it's it was just insane. So, it, may, it almost made me feel like it was intentionally set up this way for the beta to give players the opportunity to, again, level fast as possible. However, I don't know if this is 
going to be a mechanic in the real game um, just because like again if let's say they nerfed everything else but left the elite mob open area the same then that would be the primary way to level and we would do nothing else but that so i wouldn't be surprised to see like a a scale back on the respawn time so that way let's say hey guys we're gonna go do scorpia so we're gonna go do dead man's cove when we go smash through dead man's cove you know it's like 30 minutes or whatever until we're able to go back or however long it takes for the mobs to respawn and then that's when we go back out into the world to do other stuff and then maybe we come back right so it seems to me like they would want to streamline the process so you're not really stuck doing any one thing at any given time and it's kind of a collective experience and this is why i think that this will probably get adjusted as well now, again, I hope that they don't, but just in case they do, let's say they do balance the XP, do increase the amount of XP for crafting, gathering, so on and so forth, then there's more incentive to do that. There's more incentive to be in the world, complete the story quest, gather while you're doing those things, then you're like, oh, let's go check out this dungeon, let's do an expedition, let's do an open world dungeon, let's seal some portals, let's do all of these things that kind of tie into a uh, efficient XP process instead of, yo, all we're doing is quest boards or a all we're doing is xp dungeons but if there's a way <laughs> that is more efficient than all of the other ways trust me i'll find it and uh we'll get it to you <laughs> all right so with that um that brings me to my last thing and this is more siege related so for those of you guys who do not do pvp sieges this is not going to apply to you but i would not be surprised to see fire traps limited all right, so currently it's set up to where you can buy as many goddamn fire traps as you can buy, right? So if you're getting points and you're winning, that means a lot. Uh, there was points in time where I was able to just buy like 20 fire traps and just place them all on the ground, and it's kind of ridiculous. Now, granted, I know you can shoot them, you can destroy them, which is cool and all, but the reality is, is like there's not a world <laughs> where I see having 200 fire traps on the floor in your fort is an effective strategy. OK, well, I mean, it is effective, but you know what I mean? So I wouldn't be surprised to see like a trap limit, you know, placed like when, you know, maybe maximum 10 traps total for the squad, kind of sort of how they have the siege weapon limit, like siege cannon limit and all that stuff if you're on offense. But, uh, you know, from from a guild standpoint where we've done a lot of wars, we've we've fought a lot of wars this beta um it just still seems like kind of a broken mechanic that you can easily abuse uh hell we abused it so <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of limit placed on that but all in all guys i mean these are probably some of the biggest changes i would anticipate on launch because i'd imagine we're probably a couple of versions behind so we probably played version 0.9 and they're just sitting on like 1.0 and then they're taking all of our feedback and all the stuff that's happened and making you know adjustments and changes to their final build as they release and hopefully in those changes has something to do with the server stability and the lag and all that <laughs> <laughs> but that's another topic of conversation for a different day but again guys i just wanted to share these with you if you haven't been thinking about this or if you if you've gotten emotionally attached to any of the things that i mentioned i need you guys to start thinking about alternatives uh, because i think most of those things will definitely change come launch so with that being said, guys, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.